Good morning and welcome to this week. Hey, Scott. Hey, everybody. Good morning, Revolution. Good morning, Revolution. Langston Hughes lives. You know, I got to read that poem one of these days live on the show. It's oh, that's a great idea. We should definitely do that. Yeah, we should. Actually, we should do we should do a poem a week. Yeah, oh, you got a mask. You're socially distancing from me. <laughs> That's a little. So they're still very socialistically close, Joe. Yeah, socialistically close, right? Everybody do do a do a socialistically close. By the way, stream. Um, how do you call it when you uh, watch party? Watch party. Hold a watch party. Don't be shy. Spread the socialist. Well, well, Scott. You no know people are at home. <laughs> People are at home and they ain't got nothing to do. So invite your friends, but you know, the ideological struggle, which is what we're conducting here, very important, you know? Yep. Um, uh, uh, it no more be sometimes uh, Cuba um, with a, a quote from Fidel that says, uh, ideas are the weapons of the revolution. There's uh, one of them and I got on my weapon. You see, I got on my people before profit shirt. Did everybody see that? Yep. You know? Go to cpusa.org to the uh, a little store. It's in the slider. Order one today. You know, make a political statement. And speaking of which, you you I saw you got a red mask. Well, so yeah, um, uh, we're doing something called the May Day Challenge. Okay. Uh, so this year we can't show our solidarity in the usual ways, um, but we can still when we still have to show our solidarity with unemployed people, with the workers on the front lines of, of this, uh, with undocumented people, especially undocumented workers who are excluded from all of the relief measures. Yeah. Um, so we're asking people to, um, you know, make a mask uh, that shows your, uh, shows your pride, your solidarity. This is a, uh, a cloth mask that I made. It's not too hard, got a couple layers. We'll put up some instructions uh, on our Facebook page. Um, if making masks isn't your thing, um, make a sign, uh, record a, a Put it short- on. Let's see how it looks. <laughs> Who is that masked man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I've always kind of envied the, the, the folks that turn up to protest with their, you know, their, their masks and hoodies and whatever, but uh, you know, obviously I'm not gonna do that. No. Kind of, now, now I can wear a mask and it's- Very nice, very nice. So the May Day Challenge, we won it by the 26th. 28. Take a picture, 28. 20, okay. Take a picture of yourself, the little video. We're going and, to uh, it, show it. Uh, we're going to represent. We're going. May Day is coming up. Yep. You know, and uh, one of the questions I have been asking is, what are we going to do in order to demonstrate our support for May Day for the workers? How are we organizing? Just because we're stuck inside, that don't mean that we can't organize. We can, we must. You know, uh, there are all kinds of protests going on uh, in Los Angeles. Hospital workers are protesting. Immigrant rights groups are protesting. Caravans are being organized all over the country. Nurses are, you know, stepping out. Uh, Workers at Amazon are on strike, Whole Foods, they're having stay at homes, you know. In fact, there's kind of a strike wave uh, uh, mm -hmm. taking place in the country, Scott. But there is also danger on the right. Did you see what happened in Lansing, Michigan? Did yeah, the, 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 that, that band of, uh, uh, of, of crazies who showed up uh, demanding that um, you know that the restrictions and the stay-at-home orders be uh, be lifted, right? But you know, I, you know, I sort of I sort of understand it in a certain sense because, look, um, capitalism trains people to think that um, their ability to survive comes from their job, right? We depend on you know jobs for for all of our basic necessities, our healthcare, food, housing. Um, so it's a, in a certain sense, a normal response to say, um, we wanna get, we wanna get back to work. We wanna get back to business. Um, we wanna start drawing a salary again. But there's a real difference between, I was thinking of this the other day, there's a real difference between um, 
the 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 communist approach and the fascist approach i guess i would call them to to that question because the communists communists support workers we support whatever uh benefits them whatever improves their lives whereas fascists if you look at their way of of, of organizing speaking it's all about work they glorify work and that's a very different thing um you know our call is for things that improve the living standards of working people that enable them to survive this crisis not just getting people back to work um and just profits much, for capital i don't know how much work uh trump and um his cohorts and the alt-right actually do but i understand your portraying of the sentiment that people are but it's not so normal to show up with a, a swastika no that is the flag and an ak that that i had not seen the swastikas i just uh, saw uh, you know uh ch chanting lock her up mm -hmm. lock her it. up lock her and by the way the comrades in michigan wrote a wonderful statement about what happened in michigan uh the other day and this group ing is connected somehow to uh the secretary of education dewine is that her name DeVos. Her divorce and uh, don't you know they got a Facebook group, Scott, with three hundred and fifty thousand people in it from Michigan, Michiganers against or well, stay against stay at home or something like that. It's called. In fact, there's a whole movement being organized on Facebook. A number of different states: New York, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Oklahoma, you name it. So they're trying to, and the right wing is now. The pundits like Dr. Phil and that other first name doctor and the Fox News commentators are now polemicizing against the stay at home, you know, saying that it's all a bunch of nonsense. We need to restart yeah. the economy. And so what if the greatest generation dies? And and again, this is, you know, you see. The, the, the way in which the right is, is kind of parasitic upon the ideas and the slogans of the left, right? Because working people are being hurt by this thing, right? And they're, they're taking that pain and instead of giving the right response to it, which is we're going to help workers, it's um, we need to get rid of all these measures that um, are being put in place to control things. Instead of doing more for workers, we need to do less. Um, and you know they're they're trying to put this working class veneer on what's really a, an incredibly um, hateful, dismissive, reactionary policy. And it's their typical way of acting. Fascist danger is growing. Fascist danger is growing. Trump said, "I'm in control, totally in control." Could you? And then in Wisconsin, uh, huh? and then in Wisconsin. Um, holding the, forcing the elections to occur um, as planned instead of um, uh, either postponing or doing mail-in. And you lost anyway. Yeah. So there, you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> they lost anyway. But it was a very dangerous um, uh, effort on their part. And they're trying to use legislative and administrative uh, mechanisms to restrict democracy so that they can smooth the way to God knows what, you know? And part of the plan right now is, okay, um, let, let people go back to work. So what if people die? There'll be a second wave, there'll be an abatement of the crisis in the summer months, possibly, because they really don't know how this, uh, this mm -hmm. disease works. Then there will probably be a resurgence in the fall, you know, a second around the elections. Around the election, then they'll say, "Oh no, we can't have the, election. the elections." Yeah, you know, or they'll try to force people to go in the most heavily populated areas, whereas in the rural areas they have uh, less populated, it's more yeah. sparse. More people will come out. They're trying to figure out some kind of machination to. The, the, the important point here is that, um, you know, there's, there's, I think there's still a lot of resistance to using the term 
fascism to to or uh, fascism. Yes, he's authoritarian. There there are people yeah. in our government, many of them who support fascism, who want the complete destruction of all democratic uh, institutions, the dictatorial control, the full, you know, violent, what, how did Dimitri, uh, the, the, the violent terroristic dictatorship of the most reactionary section of capital. This is yeah. real. It is a very real danger. We don't have it now yet. We don't have it. There's space to struggle, which is really important. And they're trying to restrict that space. They're trying to restrict that space. And so the point that uh, uh, Georgi Dimitrov makes in his report to the Seventh Congress of the uh, Comintern, he says, he says, fascism, he says, it would be wrong to, to, to not understand that fascism is the substitution of one form of government for another. It's not a normal transition. And he said, not to, not to see that would be a big mistake because why? It'll restrict people's ability to build a wide movement, if you think it's already happened, you know? But he said, it's equally important now to fight against these attempts to restrict democratic liberties uh, in the preparatory stages. So both of them are, are, are dangerous. But you know what I don't like about the term authoritarian, yeah. Scott? It's classless. Yeah. Classless. They talk about China, authoritarian, G. They talk about Cuba, authoritarian. You know, they talk about Hungary, authoritarian. These are very different. Very different social systems based on very different ideas, very different structures of democracy, actually, if you want to know the truth. And, and, and they're not the same. And so when you don't call it what it is, you're confusing people. And that's disarming, in my <laughs> opinion. The, the word that for me goes with that is populism, which mm. is the other, the other side, because um, they, so they have this, when I say they, I mean sort of the ruling class pundits, commentators, uh, have this habit of saying that populism leads to, like anti-elite sentiment leads to authoritarianism, and they, the whole thrust of the argument is to blame the rise of fascism on working class people, working class uh, right-wing voters, okay. when in fact... Scott, you're kind of confusing me a little bit because you guys are saying on the one side there's a fascist danger, mm -hmm. and now you're talking about this populism issue, and at the same time you're saying it's a socialist moment. So yeah. which is it? Is it a fascist danger, and the main issue is democracy, or is it a socialist moment? I mean, clear that up for me. There, I think there, uh, if you look at, how to put it, um, so thinking like a Marxist means looking at what's new, what's developing, what's growing. Um, and what's growing right now are two um, separate political forces. On the right, um, a fascist danger that's increasingly organized, increasingly powerful. And on the left, an increasingly organized, united, powerful, uh, working class and socialist movement reflected in you know Bernie's performance in the primaries but also in the strike wave and and in between these two things you have this whole array of forces called moderate center whatever um, who are still very prominent but no longer are no no longer have ideological dominance or ideological leadership people don't look to them anymore as Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up, slow down, stop right there where you are. Your homeboy, Joe Biden, won the Democratic primary. Isn't he a centrist? How can you say the center cannot hold? But Ber Bernie was, Bernie was right. Uh, um, the left won the ideological struggle. Look at, you know, uh, all, all of the stuff that, um, you know, for, for the, the left, section of the Democratic Party and for, for the left broadly, those priorities, Medicare for all, support for workers, um, that stuff is now not only mainstream, it's what the whole Democratic Party pushed for in its response to COVID, expanding medical care, expanding unemployment, right? Um, Bernie, uh, B uh, Biden knows that he can't win without, without the left. Yes, um, 
But Biden doesn't support Medicare for all. Didn't 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 your homie say that if it came on the resolute desk and he was president that that he would veto it? Yeah. I mean, and, and isn't he talking about working for with the maybe even selecting a Republican for his vice presidential? Yeah. He gave I, I, that up. He's I mean, yeah, if we if we oh, look yeah, to Biden as an individual, then yeah, he's um, you know. I'm trying to find a, a non-rude way to say it. Um, We're talking about more than Biden as an individual because yeah. you know, hundreds, millions of people voted for him in the last several weeks. Bernie's electoral base constricted actually, didn't mm -hmm. expand. And now was that because uh, they thought that Biden was a more viable candidate, more electable, um, or was it because they disagreed with the uh, I was, actually, I was actually going to ask you that question. Anti-monopoly. I think it was a mixed bag. I think it was a mixture of things. Like African Americans are not anti-left. You know, in fact, they're the most pro-left group in the country, y'all. You know, um, and uh, but I think that they concluded that we concluded. Not me personally. I supported Bernie, and you know, just so you know. Um, uh, but I think people concluded that that Biden was more electable, and therefore, in this moment, that the main issue was defeating Trump. In any event, we're not endorsing anybody. We're we're we're, we're focusing on the issues. The issues right now is addressing this terrible crisis. You know. Uh, uh, support for the unemployed workers in the first place, you know, support for those populations that are most severely affected by the crisis, support for the hospital workers and all the other frontline workers, you know, support for people who can't pay rent, you know, let's, I just read that that boy who snitched on Trump, not that I'm, I'm not mad at him, his lawyer, what was his name? Uh, Trump's lawyer who went Cohen. to jail. Michael what? Michael Cohen. The boys got out of jail. Can you believe that? Thousands, hundreds of thousands, black, Latino, yeah. white workers, men, women are in locked up and he gets out of jail. And then that 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 lawyer for Stormy uh, Daniels. Avenatti, yeah. He's out. You know, this is a rich man. It's a bourgeois world, man. It's yeah. a bourgeois town, ain't it? Yeah. And Scott. And that's why we need revolution, man. That's we, you know, we do. And you know. getting back to the the question of unemployment, um, you know, we Marxists, I think, have a slightly different understanding of it than than what you get from the um, the regular media or the regular sources. Uh, what, what do we think of unemployment? What what is its role? What is its well, Marx describes it as the reserve army of the unemployed, the workers, you know, and uh, it's an important to understand that unemployed people are workers, you know, and, um, and they're not uh, a, a uh, subclass, you know, they're not the underclass, you know, there's, there's a working class, mm -hmm. and there's a ruling class, and then there's people who are in the middle, small shopkeepers, some professionals, that kind of thing. Um, and, and, but the, the definition of a worker is a man or a woman who has to sell their ability to work, who don't have no property. Yeah. I'm not talking about property, I'm talking about, you know, banks, factories, means of production. Mm -hmm. uh, you gotta sell your ability to work in order to survive. You know, and that doesn't change if you happen to be if some if you find a buyer for it or not at any given time. Exactly. And the, and and whether or not you have a buyer, that's the key question, because the unemployed exist as a section of the working class to depress the wages of ordinary workers, because you can always threaten. That's why you. You can always threaten to lay them off and bring in a scab. That's why you need unions. That's why workers are forced to collectively combine, collectively bargain in order to confront the, ba the bosses. And that's one of the big parts, elementary elements of what? The class struggle. 
And, and from the point of view of, of the capitalist class, the unemployed play a very necessary role. That's what allows them to, they're, they're all about flexible production, right? You don't want to make anything extra, expend any extra effort. So you uh, yeah. expand and shrink your workforce um, to suit your needs at a given time. So the unemployed, in fact, are playing a very important role in, in the profit-making ventures of capital. And, you know, should be, and, and on that title alone, deserve compensation. Indeed, indeed. This is Political Economy 101, folks. If this is the first time you've heard it, it will not be the last time. Uh, and by the way, we're having a school for party members coming up next week uh, on, uh, what is it, Thursday or Friday? Uh, Saturday. Saturday. Saturday, May 25th, and Saturday, May 2nd. You can write to us at cpusa at cpusa.org if you're interested and you're a member. Uh, sign up. We're going to be talking about, you know, it's going to be two consecutive weeks, right? Friday and a Saturday. Saturday afternoons. And, uh, you know, some basics of the thinking of Marx, Engels, and Lenin, and uh, Gus Hall, Henry Winston, and, and Scott, and Scott you know, Hiley. The focus of, of right now in our, our socialist moment in this uh, pandemic and the, the crisis, how do we build the power of the working class? How do we move toward this the most socialism? issue? And that's going to be it for this week, Scott. So stay healthy, uh, stay safe, stay physically distant, but socially, communally, socialistically close. And remember, send your send your masks or, you know, if you want masks, signs, if you want to record a short piece of music, poem, whatever, show your May Day solidarity, um, send it to us at discussion at cpusa.org. Um, we're going to publish the results on the websites and on the website and social media, and um, our editors will select, uh, you know, a winner for special recognition. Uh, so. Peace out, y'all. Stay healthy, comrades. Bye-bye.